What's going on YouTube? This is Dre the Plug coming at you guys with a brand new video that's pretty much just going to discuss like how to go about patting your intellectual property. Or if you just have an idea or you have a product that you feel like you can create and you want to patent this so that nobody else can go copy or steal your idea, I'm pretty much going to go into a video explaining how to do the full patent process from start to finish. Let's get into it. Okay, so before I just jump into the whole patent process, let me first explain the rules. You gotta know the rule book before you jump into this patent game. So it was a lot of things that when I first started doing my research and everything, and I started wondering like, what to do first, what is this, maybe that's not real, maybe this is true, maybe this is what it is. So I'm pretty much just gonna tell you like some of the stuff that I admit. So one of the first things is the fact that getting a patent is extremely expensive. That's a myth, like you could literally get a patent in the system and it only costs like $60 to get a patent in the system. So that's one myth. The next one is the fact that your patent have to be extremely long to the point that it's like a magazine. Like it's not that crucial. It's not an instruction manual. It's some patents out there that's literally about seven pages. A good patent that's out there is about seven pages for the most part. In most cases, it'll probably be about three drawings, probably four, five, six pages of actual words at max, at max. Like most patents aren't that long unless it's like extremely, extremely detailed to the point to where you're explaining how to create like a, like a laptop from scratch or something like that. But overall, a typical patent is about uh, seven pages. That's a pretty good lengthy patent depending on how descriptive you can really get into it. If you really just want to get one into the system, and it'll go all the way in and it seven pages isn't too bad to get a patent inside of the system so another thing is um people will also see a product and they'll say you know what this could be used for something else let me go and like change the size and make it way bigger and then i could use this for this type of um job it could probably be the same exact job but the fact that it feels bigger you could probably do more work like you can't go in and patent an idea that's already created and just change the size. Size doesn't matter when you patent something. So basically if it's already patented, the size is up to the actual person who owns it. You have to go to them and ask, you know what, can I just change the size on this, this and that? And basically, you know, go forward and try to make your own product with a different size. But when it comes down to patent something, the size isn't something that you can patent. Also, the color is also something you cannot patent. If you like, if I just change this color or, uh, you know, just change like the actual, you know, the actual texture of it, you can't go in and do that. Uh, basically, it's still part of that person who came up with the patents thing. So that's another thing. Um, one other thing that I thought was kind of like shocking is the fact that like, you don't have to physically create a prototype to have your own patent. Like, if you have an idea and you know how to create it from start to finish, and the patent office can read over it and understand that this patent makes perfect sense. Now that he gave me this, I could literally go out tomorrow and get resources and get people who could actually put this together based on the document he wrote. And this could actually be created. You are the patent holder of that particular product. No matter how much money you don't have to actually create it, if you're the person who actually went in and came up with the whole idea of exactly how to create it, you're the patent owner. If somebody who's rich comes along and say, you know what, I could build it, I could do it right now, I have all the money to do it, uh, I wanna patent this since this guy, he don't actually have it created, I wanna patent it and do this. It's like, you know, you have to go to this guy who patented it first and you will have to ask him for permission or ask him for a royalty deal or buy the patent from him. You can't just go in and just, you know, take over just because you have money, which I feel is a really good rule if you think about it. Cause like, think about all the people in the world who will probably just be like, I just want to make whatever I want to because I have the money versus somebody or a little a person who don't have as much money as like a big, big company and say, you know what? No, like I actually made this first. You can't just come in and just take over it. You could definitely use my idea or buy the patent from me. I feel like that's a way better idea. So then another thing that I ended up realizing also was the fact that it's no longer, you know, the first person who patented it, they're the ones who get it first. The first person who actually hurry up and go to the patent office, write up the document and send it, they get that patent first. Like that's not how it works anymore. Like that has changed. That's like super old school. If you came up with a patent and you have documents, you have 
doodles, you have notebooks or drawings, you have any form of evidence that you was the first person to create it, even if it was in another country, it's your property and you can pretty much go to the patent office and explain that and get your own property. So if I was just to, you know, come up with my own idea and I had like a friend come over and I let him like see it, and then a year later, he submitted it to the patent office and I go and I try to submit mine, it's like, I could pretty much prove with the evidence that I have, the person who wrote this patent, like that's my, I know who this is. I'm the one who actually made this in the beginning. I could prove it to you. I have family members and relatives who I could actually prove that I showed it to them way before then. I have emails that I have when I was actually typing up documents and sending them to my uh, own account where I, I have some documents that I was making when I was creating this just in my Gmail account. I can prove to you where I actually submitted it years ago. I can prove, I have different sources. I have other friends that I have showed this. You can pretty much go in and prove and claim your patent. So that's a really amazing rule too. So that's pretty much some of the legit, legit myths that I found out about patents. You don't have to legit create a prototype to have ownership of your patent. So yeah, man, basically new rule, if somebody comes along where out of the blue, you just find out that A, you know, somebody's creating exactly what I've been working on this whole entire time. And if, you know, both of y'all can go to the patent office or even go further than that and go to court and y'all can basically go toe to toe and prove when did you start it? When did I start it? And if you guys can pretty much prove and like show you guys evidence, the person who can actually prove that they created it first and have all of the evidence to back everything up, that's the person who will end up getting it. So, but I mean, just to avoid all that, that's why people be like, don't just go telling everybody. It's, it should be it should be a really, really small circle that you go telling your whole patent plan and how you would create it and all of that good stuff too. Definitely have people in your circle that you tell because it could also hurt you if you're the only person that know i mean like let's be realistic at any moment we could all be gone like that and it's like dang you could have a full-blown patent that's a multi-million dollar billion dollar business and if no one knows it'll just be gone and never created so it's good to still have that circle it's it's mandatory to have people where it's like um at absolute worst you can vouch for or say like yo didn't i you know do this didn't i do that remember when i sent you this hey send me the email that i sent you when i was asking you which one should i go with when i was trying to add this particular part so definitely still have like a small circle that's in the loop of your patent so you're not the only one and you're not just stuck out if at worst something happened an email go to the wrong person and they take over or just anything like there's so many so many stories we hear all the time where somebody like stole somebody's idea 